Well, our first guest wouldn't have any trouble pushing around the likes of a, a little Cavendish. You just have to catch him first. It's former Hawks star Jason Dunstall. Hello, Bungie. How are you doing, Ed? Good, mate. We go Welcome. way back in our, in our cycling Too far back, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. We did a, a lazy uh, ride from Sydney to Melbourne back in 2006. You've got the perfect frame for cycling, obviously. Haven't I? Yeah. And isn't gravity good to me when we go up hills on you, a bike? You, you're a climber? <laughs> I'm a descender. <laughs> <laughs> but it was amazing on the ride, and the, the silly things we do for charity, aren't they? But it was amazing the number of people that wanted to tuck in behind me <laughs> when we're going, you know, in any part yeah, on a flat seat. Because then. they just put their feet up and get the greatest draft you've ever seen. Now, well, you were goaded into this by your footballing mate, Wayne Schwass. Yes. Um, he said, we're doing this ride for his Sunrise Foundation. Yes. Um, wonderful cause. After day one, talk us through that. Well, a little bit of preamble. He told me it'd just be a role... Basically, we'd just be rolling them over every oh, day, yeah. which I was sceptical from the start, I must admit. And we got there on day one. I hadn't had the greatest preparation. I'd done a little bit. I <laughs> did the bay in a day, and I thought, yeah, I'm good to go. <laughs> <laughs> Ten days riding from Sydney to Melbourne. And uh, get there, and the likes of Emma Carney and Shane Crawford was there, your yep. good self, and a few others uh, that just live for riding. And so their idea of a roll is just flogging themselves for six hours. That day one, we rode out of Sydney, I reckon it was 35 degrees. Yep. And as you would recall, it finished with about a 20, 25k climb. <gasps> By this stage, I had eaten and drunk everything I could possibly get hold of, <laughs> but the body had completely shut down. I was white, covered in salt, was I not, Ed? You were too. I thought some flamingos might come down and lick your back. They were the actually climb. taken in turns, <laughs> uh, pairing up and pushing, <laughs> oh. helping me pedal up the last hill. Because oh, yeah. I was, I, I had a complete body cramp when I got to the <laughs> motel we were staying at. So I wandered off like this to my room, and everyone basically said, well, that'll be all we see. This is day one. That was day one. Mm. <laughs> Do remember, Jason, to your credit, I know we laugh, but as an elite sportsman, you knew how to just push yourself, mate, and you got through that horror first day. It was ridiculous. <laughs> it was stupidity is what it was. But then, for whatever reason, went straight to bed at about 9, 10, 12 hours sleep <laughs> and woke up and felt OK. Yeah, you were in bucks. the middle of nowhere. You didn't really have an option to, to not continue the ride. Oh, like... absolutely <laughs> I did. <laughs> My <laughs> option was just grab a cab the next day and head to the airport, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Please. I'd been sold a, a shocker from Shotter. Well, we have seen your cycling prowess. I mean, you're a long-time combatant, Danny Frawley, and you go through all sorts of sports. But we saw you on the track on one of the shows, one yeah. of your challenges. Oh, look at this. In, in great form. There's um, no limits to what two fat old men will do to embarrass themselves. <laughs> nice headbutt style. Mark Renshaw uh, issue headbutt there. And that track's a bit steeper than you first realised, right? Uh, it, it was a great thrill getting up there, though, I must say. Uh, we're cheating a little bit here because this was the stitch-up. We'd, we'd done a couple of things and this was the... Uh, the playoff race, and I actually substituted Shane Kelly in for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, when you were watching it before, Ed, uh, off air, and you're saying, gee, your posture's good. Yeah. Yeah, that ain't me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he stays it beautifully, and he lets Spud blouse him on the line. Oh, there was a wheel in it. Mm. What other sports have you guys raced each other in? There, there we've done everything. Well, we've done BMX on the bikes as well. Yeah. We've done footy, cricket, soccer, hockey, badminton, table tennis, <laughs> diving, gymnastics. Gymnastics. Lacrosse. Yeah. Synchronised. Really? Lacrosse is the one thing we haven't oh, done. We've thrown it up, but thought a bit too dangerous. What the hell is lacrosse too anyway? <laughs> to all those couple of men with clubs. <laughs> you don't think that's dangerous, and, and a bloke that's white line fever in spud. <laughs> oh, so, so you don't have a competitive instinct. You're just no, there to, oh. I'm just there to enjoy the contest, enjoy meeting new people and playing different sports. <laughs> and he just wants to win and hurt you while he's winning. Why don't you harness your descending skills? Have you tried luge? No, but I can imagine it's out of control and I'd end up hitting something at about 240k an hour. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's meant to be individual runs down that hill, but two at once would be something, you know, on individual luge no, It's probably a little bit slow. We're not young anymore, Ed. Hmm. So have you been losing any sleep watching this first 10 days of the tour? Absolutely. In actual fact, I mean, the last month or so, it's just been a, a sportsman's paradise, hasn't it? Watching just about everything, Wimbledon and, uh, and the tour, watching the, the British and... Irish Lions give it to Australia. Now we've got the Test to the Ashes series kicking off, so it's absolutely they're, brilliant. They're going a bit too good, aren't they, the Poms? Yeah, yeah, don't get me started. Wimbledon? Not uh, liking this, it. Although for him, he's Kenyan. Yeah, he was born in Africa. He's Kenyan. They've yeah, stolen yeah. him across, you know, yeah. giving him a passport. He's a proud, a proud Englishman now. What's been he? some of your highlights of the Tour de France? Um, this year? I, I, I fell in love with Richie Paul when I saw that first huge effort he did to drag Chris mm. from him up yep. and unleash him. And I reckon for the first time... I, finally realised that 
we've got another Australian that's going to win a tour before too long. I reckon he's the man. Mm. Yeah. Good it call. might be next year, it might be two or three years down the track, but I reckon he's shown enough that he can actually uh, do what Cadell did for yeah, us. I will say this for you. You are the most avid TV watcher I've ever known. <gasps> mm. yeah, it doesn't have to be sport. It's movies and so on. Yeah. Is there a favourite sport that you enjoy on the telly more? Um, I watch just about everything, Ed. I love my couch. I've got a beautiful couch. Yeah. It's got an imprint of my body just uh, pretty much uh, lazed across it. Well, when I first met you, you used to have the TV guide with the highlighter pen and you'd map out the week's viewing. Did you have a All job? Or no, I've worked 40. very hard. <laughs> But You're I mean, in the same industry, young lady. How can you say that? <laughs> I never played for Hawthorne and I never drank a beer after a game. I'd like that on the record. Glass of wine's never passed those lips. <laughs> Not after a game. <laughs> You've got to get out more. <laughs> <laughs> Not enjoying yourself properly. Well, mate, we'd love you to stick around. We've got the rollers coming up shortly. Do mm. Have we got the goodie bags? Yes, we do. There's some alcohol. Uh, really? That's a nice little bottle from Mitchelton. Oh, nice. Uncle cool, Jerry. And I have a feeling you're eyeing off a challenge on the rollers, perhaps, you know, the fixed wheels on these rollers of death in the coming yeah, weeks. Yeah, a little so bit worried about it. Stick around. I'd love mm. to, uh, to uh, cast your eye over our two competitors coming up shortly.